All right, what's up, everybody? Um, Good morning. It's a uh, not your ordinary barber with NYO Barbershop. We got uh, CT Barber here. It's a little early in the morning, so if our voices are a little funky, if we seem a little down, well, anyway, it's our first video. Uh, kind of wanted to do a little video introducing ourselves, uh, introducing ourselves to the uh, YouTube page so you guys get to know who we are. I'm going to start off with Chris. He'll let you know where he came from, how old he is, how long he's been cutting, so on and so forth. So, good morning, Jose. Mm. It's pretty early, but um, it is. we're here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my name is Christopher Gabata. Just so you guys not just say CT. What is CT? <laughs> um, my name is Christopher Gabata. I'm 26 years old. Um, I've been cutting for about five to six years now. Well, in total, not like consistent, because I used to do other things before. Yeah, like, but Staying. in total, more or less. Yeah, in total, right? Yeah. But, um, what's up? What do you want to talk about? I no, I figured, the, um. Introduction or something. Yeah, it's basically how old you are, um, things like that. How about you? a little bit about you so I can... Uh, my, uh, my name's Jose. I, uh, I've i been cutting now for consistent, consistent, maybe about eight years, mm. give or take, without doing nothing else, just cutting. Mm. Uh, I ain't gonna tell you my age because I don't want to spoil that. But, um, but yeah, I, uh, I didn't always cut hair. You know, I'm older, obviously, and you guys are probably thinking eight years, oh, that's not much. You're older. But I had kids at a young age, and I, um, I, uh, I kind of, you know, needed that definite money. So I was always afraid to kind of steer to, towards just doing this. But I uh, finally got into it. That's another story for another day. We'll explain. Sometimes you gotta take the risk, right? Yep, you gotta do it. You know, um, it's not just a risk. I get it. You know, it's hard because a lot of people are not willing to do that. You know, go all in, but eventually you're gonna have to. I mean, you know, it's hard to to kind of switch careers from just going from a job where you're making a steady income to something where you're not 100% sure. And that's not only for barbershop. That's like basically it goes to like everything. Like some people are like afraid to like just stay with one thing or just like afraid they they probably won't have the income they need to support their needs. You know. So. And it's understandable, you know? Yeah, I got kids, you definitely. know? I lost a lot because I went all in without really, you know? But uh, it was worth it for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know you used to do other things too, you know what I mean? Yeah, Before yeah. you started barbering. Yeah. Yeah. Same situation. You got kids. Yeah. You know? And it wasn't that easy, but um, I mean, it's worth it in the long run if this is something you like to do, you know? Yeah. If you really want it, then you go, go for it full time and, well, you you gotta be sure that you want to do it all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's dedicate it's, yourself to do it. So. Uh, it's a risk either way, but um. <clears throat> all right. So, what do you got? Like, that's a topic for today. Uh, I got a few things. Uh, one, most people that are probably gonna watch this video, if we if they do, is probably new barbers and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, guys that are kind of trying to figure out what this 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 profession brings or what to expect so I kind of want to just talk about a couple uh, uh, journeys that we've been through yeah. you and me yeah. as to how we got to where we are and where we started and and you know kind of like the trials and stuff in between um, so I mean if you want you can go first and explain to them kind of like first off like what you know you what you feel is is what brought you back to the barber shop after, you know? Because you said you went back and forth for a little bit. Yeah, so first of all, I started off like in a warehouse. Basically, as an employee, warehouse employee, normal, like basically a lot of people work at a warehouse. But I thank God that I, I knew early that I didn't want to stay there, like stuck in, in a warehouse. And I had my first son about when I was 20 years old and then I went to college for a little bit dropped out then kept working at a warehouse 
so basically in the Dominican Republic I came from the Dominican Republic and um my interest grew like over there. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't as focused or like interest to learn mm-hmm. about it. Well, you were still young. Yeah, I was still young and I don't really know <coughs> what I wanna do because I, I just wanted to be a baseball player. So that didn't happen. Went to college for a little bit. Didn't have time for college because I was living by myself. And then um, I just kept grinding and working. Just. So to not get off the topic too mm-hmm. much. So I just, the barbershop that I used to get a haircut at, I basically went there and I like, just asked my, my barber and the owner, oh, do you guys have somebody sweeping here so I can stay here and look at the guys and just keep learning from you guys and stuff like that. So my interest grew a little bit more and so I just went towards that path. You know, like my, well, like how everybody starts. Yeah. You're either cutting your own hair or you go to a barber shop and you're sweeping floors and you're watching, man. You know what I mean? That's yeah, how basically pretty much everybody starts. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what, um, when did you know that it was like, okay, I'm done with all this, working for somebody else, I'm going to try to do this myself? Or when did you know that this is what you wanted to do and you decided to stick with it? Oh, my case was was a little bit hard because, like, in between I was doing warehouse and barbershop at the same time in one time, then yeah. I quit the warehouse and stayed in the barbershop but I wasn't making enough money so I went to trucking that's when I <laughs> I started right. driving trucks and stuff like that <coughs> trucking was it's a very very good job but it's not for everybody uh, what a lot of you guys don't know is that I met him even before the barbershop because yeah. that same grind that he's talking about I went through you know yeah, I had life is crazy <laughs> yeah like I had kids you know and and I needed something so I was working nights and then I would, you know, after I, I, I would come home, whatever, and then I would be in the barbershop, same yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And we worked in the same warehouse. I worked in the, I think it was the same shift, probably mm-hmm. even too. Yeah. And we didn't know, <coughs> we didn't know each other. No, we that's didn't. Crazy. We didn't really, you know, we didn't know each other like yeah. that. You know, how, how it's crazy how things bring people together. That's really cool. Too. No, but, but go ahead. All right, so you was doing both. Um, then you decided to do trucking. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Basically, uh... Some things happen with trucking, you know, I don't want to get into details with that, you know, mm-hmm. but um, I don't know, I, I didn't feel that like, I like trucking. I was doing it because of the money and at the same time it was like, over, over how do you say that? Overwhelming. O- overwhelming, yeah, so I had a kids pretty young too and um, I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't like it, I didn't. So I just went back to a barbershop, which I liked it a little bit more. So I just kept grinding and learning, and I was, I love it, man. It's the best thing to do is something that you like, something that you enjoy doing. Like You won't feel that you're working and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's hard because a lot of people don't know what that is. Yeah, they don't. You know? They don't know what they want to do. And more like young barbers or, or young people that, some people could be doing barbering now and they end up doing something else. And, Mm-hmm. You never know. And you're young too because a lot of people, it takes years to figure out what it is that they like to do, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. me, for example, it took me a long time. I mean, I always liked it, but I was always more steered towards just making a little bit of money to to support every, all my family, you know? That yeah. was my thing. But, um, I mean, aside from the barbershop, what other passions or whatever, love you, you know, what, what, what else you got that you, you, you really enjoy? Um, well... I went to college and way before college I used to play baseball. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And then when I knew that didn't work out, I just um, went to college for computer information systems. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know what I wanted to get out of from that field, but I just wanted to do something, you know. Well, you I wanted to work and stuff like that. And then um, I thought about the barbering that I that I experienced in the Dominican Republic, I thought about it back. I'm like, oh, I'm interested in that, so let me just do that to see what I can get out of it. Here I am. And you know, it's kind of, I'm not saying it's weird, but it's good in a way because you're young and you experience a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. You know, 
And that's the thing where even I tell my kids, get out there and try different things because you never know what you're going to like. You know, so you've done, you've worked for other people, you've tried the college thing, you've done the baseball thing, you did the trucking thing, <clears throat> who knows what else in between here and there, you know, the barbering, <clears throat> and, 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 it, and it brought you back, you know, to what, what you like doing, you know what I mean? And, 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 and most people don't, don't even know what, what it is, you know? You know, that's, that's, that's awesome that you actually so young and went through that, you know what I mean? But yeah. Um, what else you, um, what do you see for yourself in the future as barbering? Um, maybe teaching, maybe teaching what I already know and the, the, the things that I know about the field, barbering field, and, um, not only just cutting hair, you know, more, a little bit more probably the social media, which is what is really... You know, what's, what's popping right what's now? What's popping right now? And you know, that's, that's something big. Something big that we can have, like, we can leverage from that. We can definitely, like, do a lot of good things with Instagram, a lot of platforms that we can utilize. And, TikTok's you know, blowing up yeah. like crazy, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like, TikTok is like. <laughs> it blows up. I find myself, I can't even go, I mean, yeah. excuse this, but I can't even go to the bathroom without grabbing my phone and opening up Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, but definitely just like in the barbering thing. Yeah. Not just cutting hair, or, you know. So you want to teach and you want to get yeah. it more into like social media. So that's one of, one of the topics we're going to cover maybe in another video, but that's one of the things I told you maybe that's like new challenges. All right, so I left off where you said another topic you want to talk about that it's like new challenges like barbering has brought like so many different interests and and like learning and like doing there's like so many things you could do that like i never knew that like, you know, so it's definitely interesting and things that i that i'm looking forward to well i see that there's a lot of things that this is something that's always changing right now if you stay where you know, you're comfortable and, and you're doing the same thing over and over and get, again, it's going to get boring, you know what I mean? There's so many different things that you can try and do in this industry anyway, where there's different styles of haircuts because it's always changing. So you got different styles of haircuts, hair dye, um, designs, competitions, expos, that there should be no reason why you get bored with it, you know what I mean? Unless, you know, you really don't. You know, you, you're not really passionate about it, or you really don't like it. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're not wrong, cause I've seen a lot, a lot of bar, like a lot of experienced barbers over 10 years, 15 years, that they say that they lose, they has lo lost like love for it. And yeah. like, how do you lose love for it if you doing different things? Well, cause they stay but stuck it, doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, if you're stuck doing the same thing or just cutting people, <clears throat> then you're probably gonna get bored. I'm not gonna say no, cause you know, we're humans and you're probably gonna get like sick of it. You know, some of you guys might think, well, I have my clientele built. You know, I feel like I'm cutting the same people every day, every week, it's the same thing, same thing. Well, I mean, you, you're the only one that can change that, really. Like, you know? If you're doing some different things, like going to the events, this and that. Well, not and just that. Like, let's say you, you could pick a day. Different, yeah. You could pick a day where you don't, you don't schedule anybody and you could do walk-ins. Mm -hmm. And you know, you try to reach out to new people. You know, you don't necessarily have to de dedicate all your time to all your clients, you know? No. You could pick a day and do walk-ins. You could pick a day and do something different. Um, well, so you know, that's really on, 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 up to you guys, you know? Yeah, it's gotta be within you. Mm -hmm. You gotta make things that you wanna do, you know? Like, you gotta so come out of your, they don't wanna do, like, You gotta come out of your comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like this right now, what we're doing right now is like, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is mad different for me. I know you guys see this shit all the time. But yeah, yeah, that's what here I said, just like, talk about it. Like you gotta come out of your comfort new zone. New challenge, and, and you know, I'm willing to go towards that, like, you know, yeah. and learning about it because I'm definitely not good at it. Like, you know, I'm a shy guy. <laughs> no, me too. But this is kind of cool. There's nobody around. Really, it's quiet. It's just us and the camera. I mean, it's doable. Nice and early. That's the only problem. <laughs> I gotta do this shit on the day off real quick. <laughs>
<coughs> nah, but we'll, we'll be alright, you know, like, you can do anything, anything that you think of, that, that you put your passion into it and your effort, we can do it. Yeah, I think, you know, just ideas, you know. It's, it's all about motivation. Ideas too, man. And, Wake and up. Having the right people around you, bro, because no, normally, I'm going to be honest, normally I would say, all right, let's do something like this, but I'd be the only one sitting here doing it. You know what I'm trying to say? Exactly. I really don't have, you know, besides from you and, and, and probably Louis. That support. You know, not even the support. It's more like the, okay, all right, let's just go and do it. Some uh, people say it just to say it. You know what I mean? You know, so that's that's big also, man. You know what I mean? Now, another question for you. Where do you see yourself in... As far as like, aside from teaching and 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 stuff like that, where do you see yourself now? You know, where do you see yourself in a few years? Like, I know you just came. We just went to the expo there where you competed and things like that. Is that something you want to continue to try to do, or that's not really like your thing? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably do it again. Yeah, it was really interesting. It was. It was it was fun. Yeah, that's like that but adrenaline, like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like that kind of. Yeah, it was funny. It, it's uh, it's a very good experience, but um, I don't think I see myself doing it like so often or so yeah. much. I'll probably do Every a couple. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. I, I'm not gonna say I'm always gonna be there, but I'll probably go, enjoy it, watch other people, learn, go yeah. to seminars see, and stuff, and stuff, like, stuff that. like that. Be involved. I like being involved. <coughs> to I don't be know, honest, I, like, I don't think I'm gonna I, I like dedicate my life, there. my life to the no, no. like compete or stuff like that. No. I just figure, you know, hey, no. if we're gonna go up there, might as well make it fun. <laughs> might just go, go just ahead, to see I, everything. I'll be, I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> you know, I just go up there and just do it. Fuck it. Yeah. See where you're at. See where everybody's at. Problem with that is, man, it's, it's models, dude. Like model, everybody wants to go, yeah. but then at I the see. last minute they say no. Last one I went wow, to, I, I never. Easy. Last one I went to, I never even cut the guy before, bro. You didn't have to start paying your models. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I never cut him before. It was the first time. I didn't even know what the hell to do to his head. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I just have fun with it, you know. I don't know. Unless it's somebody like your, your son, son. Is like somebody. Yeah. It's not one of you guys or my kids. Like, I ain't the first time I went, and you know, the first and last time I went, it was uh, my brother-in-law. He was with. He, he wanted to do. Everybody's willing to take their day off and just go with their barbers to yeah. competition. And more if you're not gonna pay them. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna enjoy it, but they don't have passion for that like we do. So yeah. it's understandable. And if you find someone that does, <laughs> then that's <laughs> stick with them, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's just not easy. Do you ever see yourself doing like a podcast or like doing a video for YouTube too, like so I can, the world can watch it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I um. Actually, these kids from the area did a little thing here where it was like like a little podcast they do, man. And it kind of inspired me to try to do something like that, too, as far as, like, barbering. Mm -hmm. Have the barber shop and customers we meet. Um, there's a lot of ideas I have from that that I kind of want to pursue, which I think would be pretty dope. Um, I never saw this. I didn't see myself doing it either, but something, something kind of sparks, you know what I mean? Like... You gotta be willing to, to, to grow and to do new things. Like you said before, get out of your comfort zone and do something new, do something that you're not really good at, and uh, you can learn. Let's try something different. Yeah. Now, what kind of videos do you want to try to do later on? <clears throat> you know, for so people can see your. Well, before I, I've, I've thought about it doing like something that. I tried to like sports. Okay. Maybe talk about sports a little bit and like I tried that kind of public. But you know, sometimes we say things and we don't execute them right away. Maybe because you need something else. You want to be more prepared for it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. How about you? I'm not really into sports. I'm more about <coughs> trying to. I like to try to do something with more about. Something different. Yeah. Not just not just educating. You know, yeah, I, I do want to do some tutorials and things like that. It could be like fun videos too. Like fun videos or just conversation videos, you know? And those are the videos that more like, they go viral more. Like something that makes people laugh. Like say, it could be barbershop, it could be music, whatever. But 
And, and you, you know, the other thing too is with, with our customers, you know, like we cut a lot of different people. The demographic is, is, is you know, it, it's, it's all different, you know, so yeah. we, we can cut someone that sells drugs. I'm not going to, you know, m mention names or anything like that, but, or you can cut a police officer right afterwards. You can cut a business owner and you can cut somebody that's trying to open up a business, you know? So I think the customer's perspective is important as well. I don't think it's just what, you know, we go through on a daily basis or, 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 or you know, to educate. I think it's more about the conversations we have too, you know? It's more than cutting hair. You got to make them feel that, like, comfortable in that chair. Well, facts. Well, you guys more in than being a barber. In order to come back to you. In order to come back to you, they, they need to feel good. Probably more often than not, have a conversation with their partners. Have a good service. Mm -hmm. Cut them the way they want. You gotta it's be. Like, it's a lot of things. Dude, you gotta be a barber. Know. You gotta be a psychiatrist. You gotta be a friend. You gotta be. You know. Sometimes so, customers. So sometimes customers walk in and they'll be having a bad day and they just want to. It's way more than a haircut. Yeah, you gotta be able to feel them out. You know, it's it's. It's more than just a haircut. Probably have a good vibe too, because you could be a good barber, and if, if the client don't feel that they feel comfortable with you, they probably won't come back. Yeah, it could be even the best haircut they, of their life, and they even if it's a good haircut, yeah, hundred percent right. Yeah, you know, communication is key. Some people don't want to talk. Some people just want to come and relax. But you yeah. gotta be able to feel you that. You gotta, you gotta try to see if they want to talk or not. Yeah, you gotta be able to feel that. You know, and it's real simple. A couple of questions. You sit them in the chair. Hey, how you doing today? After you do your consultation, you let you know what kind of haircut you're getting. Customer service. Exactly. Hey, how you doing today? Yeah. If you you know, if it's you like, see that I'm he's only answering one or two answers, yeah, I'm good. Exactly. I told you before, like I'm shy. Like I, if it's a new person, I'll say enough. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, how you doing? You know, I interact a little bit. But if the client doesn't talk much, I probably won't talk much either. Exactly. Because you know, sometimes I, I try, but. And I have learned that here, like, you know, it's a lot of things that you learn, things that you have to do for your career that, you know. Sometimes it's tough. I've had customers in the chair where yeah. I thought they fucking hated the haircut, dude. <laughs> that this dude, like, his face was serious, you know, and I'm like, man, what the hell? I show him what's going on, so you tell him the price so of the haircut, and he pays you double, or he gives you a good tip, and you're like, well, you know, it's more than just he, he just some, wanted that that time. You yeah, know what I mean? sometimes they're just like that because uh, you have a lot like everybody has like that one client that they're, they're mad serious. Mm -hmm. They're mad serious and like they're just like that they're in that way. Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, but you got to feel them out, you know. See, yeah. you ask ask a question, but try and at least like ask them, you know, like, ask them how how's their day going. Exactly. You know, don't stay quiet. Talk Communicate to your, with them. Talk to your clients. Yeah. That's a very important key. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. This phone keeps going off. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, so that's all you're going to hear in the background is text messages. Gling, gling, gling. And people calling and stuff. It's early, boy. Yeah, it's too early for that. Uh, well, what <coughs> you got? What, what other things you got? Uh, I'm not sure. I got so many, to be honest with you. Um, I'll leave it up to you guys. You know, you guys Come see what below. it is. Wow. You what you guys want to see. Yeah, what you guys want to see, you guys can ask questions and stuff like that. We'll, we'll be reading and feeding off from you guys too, because like, it's a new thing for us, you know, so. Yeah, definitely. We'll definitely stay on top of it. Not just us two here in the barbershop. There's eight of us in total. Um, you guys will get to know the other guys little by little as we go on. Most of this is going to be me and Chris, though, of course. Um, you know, he may bring a guest on, it might just be him and the guest, or I might just bring somebody on, it may just be me and them. Yeah, I expect a lot of new things, like, I, I, we're willing to do a lot of good things for for this channel, and, so, and for the barbershop, yeah. and, and anyone else from, from the guys, if they want to join. They're more than welcome <coughs> to, I'd like for them to try. If they have an opinion, or sit down with us, you know. So, I wrote down, never settle. Never settle to just cut hair if you are a barber or whatever you do. Like never settle to just do that thing. Like 
be willing to do like different things and you know we'll talk about it get out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. do something new do things that you like that you enjoy doing you know. there's something there's something that I saw I forgot who the heck it was that said it but they said in order for you to not improve or get to the top of where you want to be you have to change the way you are all right not necessarily the fact that if you're a kind person or whatever it is you don't have to change that all right but you have to change the way you you think so for example yeah. you said never settle right i've had customers ask me yo jose what's what's the end game for you where are you going to stop and i don't have one dude you know uh, i do have several things that i'd like to accomplish but end game i don't have an end game yeah then when you want to grow you don't have an end game. yeah and if you do, you stay stagnant. You stay bored. So I'm not going to say don't have an end game. It's always good to have a plan, but uh, don't settle, you know. Keep growing until until you can't grow anymore, you know. Don't stop. Keep going and, and, and keep coming up with new ideas, new things, and try them out. If it don't work, it don't work. If it does, it does, you know, and... And, and continue with it. Don't don't just start something and then say, oh, in th- two weeks it's, it's not, not going to work. It's not easy to just do. You know, keep going. Just work and, you know, you got to be willing to do a lot of sacrifice, a lot of good. Like, see, for me, like, this is sacrifice. It's, of course. I see, I see it in a positive way, but it's a sacrifice. Yeah, like, I could have I I been laid up in my bed with my wife. Hanging out. You, you know, know how, many, how many times we have tried to do one, do? one hey, what's video up? and uh, morning, Oh, my bad. What's up? No, you good? No more. <laughs> it's live. That's fine. <clears throat> you know how many times I try to, like, even with you, I learned that with, with you and with the guys at the barbershop, like, try to do a, a video and, like, we have to do it, like, so many times and over. Just to get it right. Over, just to, not right, like, uh, <laughs> decent. Yeah, or at least get it to where you say, okay, I can, like, this will pass, you Yeah, know? like, at least people will watch it and, Say something about it. They don't like it. All right, so this will be the first video for now. Uh, stay tuned for some more stuff. All right. Yeah, be safe. Peace. Well.